This is the Tom Bigby Tales, and I'm your host, Shannon Evans. I write about a small town in northeast Mississippi along the Tom Bigby River called Columbus, and sometimes I write about the rest of the state. Today's episode is why Nancy Carpenter, the director of the Columbus Historic Foundation, and Mayor Keith Gaskin make such odd bedfellows. I don't know why the mayor of Columbus, Mississippi, promised Nancy Carpenter, the director of the Columbus Cultural Heritage Foundation, and the MDAH a 20% match share of $54,069.69 for the Tennessee Williams Building. But I do know, based on city budget and city minutes and city recordings of council meetings, the city council has zero knowledge of his promise or of the fact the foundation had even asked for the match share. Did Carpenter trick Mayor Gaskin into signing the document for the grant she applied for and got, despite her own position as vice president of the MDAH Board of Trustees? The document Gaskin signed on September 29th of 2023, this past fall, Submitted with the rest of Carpenter's error-riddled, incomplete grant application states, Certificate of Match Share. I, the undersigned, which would be Mayor Gaskin, certified that the matching funds identified above, 54000 plus, are available and that they will be allocated only to the Community Heritage Preservation Grant described in this application and titled Restoration of the Tennessee Williams House Museum and Welcome Center. In print, under the mayor's signature, is an additional condition for the signatory agency, the mayor, as stated by the MDAH. Applicants are strongly encouraged to submit documentation of the matching share, i.e. copies of bank statements, to this page. Please note, without documentation, organization may not receive full credit for the match share. The only documentation provided was a wishy-washy letter stating the mayor would be working with the city council to identify the $54,000, even though he, uh, and above that, promises on page 23 of the document that he signed, that he would that the money was there and that he would stand behind it. How that promise and the wishy-washy letter made it through the grant process at the MDAH remains a huge question that the MDAH is yet to answer despite my three letters to ask. But I will say that for a later podcast episode, we'll go into it much more in depth. For now, let's focus on the backroom deals the mayor clearly made with Carpenter. How exactly did this dirty deal go down and why? Even more important, why did the mayor, who on multiple occasions has stated he did not support Carpenter and questioned the ethics around multiple financially related and tourism related decisions she has made and who has told multiple people he hates meeting with her? Why did he get in bed with her financially with this backdoor deal without even once consulting with his city council? Is this a case of he speaks out of both sides of his mouth? Or did he promise it to her to prevent confrontation in the moment, knowing full well and good the city council would never approve such a large amount, especially since it was never even proposed in the 2024 budget? Then he could go back to Carpenter shrug his shoulders, and say to her and the newspaper, golly gosh, I wanted to help preserve that building, but the city council refuses to work with me. Or is it a case of Carpenter in a panic to get the 20% match share the CV board was never going to give an okay for, as she had just been called on the carpet for overspending her marketing budget significantly and had made sizable backdoor deals without her board's approval, one for the $80,000-plus MSU Jumbotron ads covered in a much earlier episode. So she knew she would not get money there. So she went to the mayor in a panic 
but with a plan. A plan he would not be able to resist due to his own ego and his vanity project. I can hear it now. They met at Carpenter's office and she said, Mayor Gaskin, I have a favor to ask. And if you will do it, I'll do something really special for you. Gaskin would nervously answer, Okay, Nancy, I'm all ears, but no promises yet. And Nancy would say, Mayor, I need a 20% matching grant for the MDAH renovation project that I need to submit. It's only $50,000 or so, just a little bit of money. If you will tell the MDAH folks you will cover the match share, I'll speak to my friends at the legislature about funding your amphitheater that you have already had turned down six times by that same legislature. And I can see him selling his soul at the CVB and Columbus Cultural Heritage Foundation Crossroads if it meant he could get dollars to finish his pet albatross across the river. I can think of no other reason he would saddle his horse to hers. On Saturday evening, I was digging through the actual MDAH grant Carpenter had filed and found significant irregularities like the one related to the mayor's match share. I wrote an extensive email to Barry White, that's really his name, and Kay Blunt of the MDAH asking for specific questions. To date, I still await answers, but at the same time, I emailed the city attorney and every member of the city council. And I will read you that exact letter. Dear Council and City Attorney, the Columbus Cultural Heritage Foundation, CCHF, Director Nancy Luke Carpenter, the MDAH's newly appointed Vice President, announced in a Columbus Visitors Bureau meeting that a significant grant had been awarded to do repairs on the Tennessee Williams home to the tune of $220,000. This grant includes a 20% match share that has been guaranteed by the mayor of Columbus at over $54,000 in a promissory note. There is nothing I can find on any city council agenda or minute notes where the mayor has ever discussed this commitment of monies to the foundation, nor has Mrs. Carpenter apparently appeared before the council during 2022-2023 to request such monies that I can find per the minutes and the videos listed on the city's website. It is concerning to me that this application was approved by the MDAH as much as missing in the application, and that which is included is gravely flawed or incomplete per their own guidelines. The entire award reeks of nepotism and cronyism, and now the city of Columbus appears to be a party to this questionable behavior and application as well. I must admit the most concerning to me as a citizen of Columbus is that the mayor promised money without the knowledge or voice of the city council who represents the people of Columbus. This is deeply concerning. I am attaching the application Carpenter submitted, including the mayor's promissory note and his letter, as well as the unsigned letter from Miss Dixie Butler, a visually impaired senior currently in nursing care. I am including the MDAH directions and requirements for the application PDF link as well. Of note, one, the application requires three letters of endorsement. Carpenter only includes two, and one of those is not even signed. Two, photos of damage are required and none are included. Three, share match is supposed to be in the bank or guaranteed, not just promise. See document page 14H. Financial statements. The statements she sent are from 2017 through 2019 and not the more recent ones. Financials are available through 2022 at TE Lot and the Columbus Cultural Heritage Foundation. I included a link to the MDAH grant requirements, and then I stated, the application from Carpenter to the MDAH for the grant is attached. The mayor's letter of promise are pages 23 and 24. If I can provide any more insights or answers, any questions, do not hesitate to reach out via email or by phone or text with the warmest regards, Patricia Shannon Evans. I am awaiting a response from the council or the council or the city's attorney. However, city council does not meet again until next week. As a result of this email that I sent to the city council and to the city attorney, 
I spent Sunday through Wednesday of this past week under a constant barrage of texts and Facebook messages and, excuse me, Facebook comments on my Facebook page from the mayor that I have yet to respond to because they are insulting, derogatory, bullying, and gaslighting. But most importantly, they are not germane to the question at hand. Did the council know the mayor made this $54,000 promise to MDAH? The mayor has demeaned this podcast in his rants by telling me to put him on it to debate. Debate what? It is a question for the city council to answer. That is all. I have requested my ward's representative ask my question before the council. I have been ordered by the mayor to appear at the council meeting this week. However, at this point, based on the following letter, I don't feel it is in my best interest physically, emotionally, nor the city's for me to appear before the council as my voice has been heard and I only await an answer to my question. Logical questions every concerned citizen in our town should have. Who approves or promises spending like this if it's not in the budget? It's a simple business question. In the meantime, the mayor is still on Facebook attacking multiple private citizens who disagree with him. And instead of dealing with the two lengthy gun battles and hours of street fighting, excuse me, street racing, raging on our city streets last night, he is instead rampaging and raging over my letter to the city council. Shouldn't our mayor be dedicating that $54,000 to something more useful like law enforcement to maintain the safety of our town and its citizens? Instead, he honestly has said he wants to erect the world's largest possum statue in town, a possum that would have clothing, as his crowning achievement and fund and to continue funding Carpenter's malfeasance at this at the foundation. I don't know why the mayor gave Carpenter that financial promise. I do know the only reason he's raging at me with personal attacks and everyone else who naysays or questions him is because he's been caught doing the wrong thing when he thought no one was looking. Thank you for coming on my podcast. This is the Tom Baby Tales. Until next time.